Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Easter to those of you that are celebrating Greek Orthodox Easter today. My name is Anka Metcalf, and this is uh, the Futures Market Outlook for the week starting with today, April 28th, 2019. All right, let's begin with the Imini Dow. Last week left us a doji onto the chart, and uh, just remember that we have just a couple of days until. Uh, a brand new monthly candle is just about to emerge on our monthly charts. Uh, that is looking quite bullish. And uh, as far as the weekly goes, we're tapping into these uh, prior to highs that first off uh, was established last year in January, just before the volatility, has, uh, volatility began. The second high was the October high it was actually last year's all-time high of 26.966 and uh, right now we're trading very very close to that high so last week we managed to print up high of 26.694 and uh, we're pretty much accelerating into that last year's all-time high into the 26.966 area so from where I am looking right now, I have yet no reason to be uh, to be bearish on this move, even though it is a triple top. I think that the fact we have digested a pretty, you know, a, a good amount of time into these highs, and I would say starting with March, so March and April was a digestion was were basically two digestion months that we could have pulled back further, but we held. So we held the 10 exponential moving average. We held the 25,300, which was a line in the sand. It was minor support for current price action. This uh, price was derived from these prior highs from March and also from these prior highs from June. And we managed to, uh, to consolidate and break out higher. Now this digestion here was a good indication that we may be getting ready for a new high and this actually happened so last week we did have a new high compared to last week again a uh, digestion of these prior highs right here and i think that since the vix are consolidating still at the low and they're still pointing lower i think that we may still have another leg higher in the indices so my bias is going to be bullish again for this week i'm going to be bullish until proven otherwise we have no reasons yet uh for a uh, bearish bias uh so moving forward uh to actually taking a step back to the daily charts we're setting up a really nice uh, pullback buy off the 20 simple moving average on the daily chart and a break above this prior high in so uh respectively uh 26 577 uh, a print over 80, over 580 is going to push price higher uh, into the 26,700 area. Once we print prices above the 26,700 area, that opens the door for higher projections. Uh, the next projection is going to be obviously the 27,000, which is not going to be that far away, but 27,000 is going to be the next uh, target area for this upcoming week and don't forget that this week is very rich in economic in uh, uh in earnings and also in economic events we have the fomc meeting minutes uh midweek uh and uh, that is going to also create some volatility some uh some uh, price action activity for our indices all right, so uh, immediate price action for the overnight trading uh, session. On Friday, I was watching uh, the 26,500 level, uh, level being tested, and I was waiting for a break above the 26,500 so I can become bullish again for, uh, for the trading session. Now, this happened in the last moments of the trading session. So um if you are looking at a smaller time frame chart such as let's say the 15 minute you could see that basically in the last 10 minutes of the trading session uh we have ignited higher challenging the prior high and yet making a new high um for uh for this move here into the uh 26 uh, 500 
pull back here i'm going to go back to the hourly chart for some immediate price action uh, uh, for uh, the overnight trading session and for er very early going into the monday's trading session as long as we're going to be holding above the 450 level 450 to 500 that's going to be the cluster that needs to hold the price for it to project higher further prior uh, for further price uh, uh, further price targets for this move is going to be into these prior highs into the 580s uh 600 650 and basically into this prior high of 26 700 and from 26 700 we have a really nice void all the way to 2700 so that is about 300 point void that's going to be the easier portion of the trade and um if you have noticed, uh, YM has, and the Dow, the mini Dow has been lagging. So we've had uh, a, a lot of strength uh, going into the mini S&P 500 and also a lot of strength going into NASDAQ. Once we're going to get the Dow over this 550 to 600 level, we're definitely going to try to punch in higher through that 700. It's still going to be a turbulent zone uh, from the pullback that was set up last week. And actually, that was set up in the last three trading sessions uh, last week. But once we navigate and we digest these highs, pullback buys are going to be back on the menu for this uh, for this week. All right, let's uh, continue with the mini S&P 500. Going to zoom out again to the weekly chart. After a doji that was set last week into this double high, there were a lot of, uh, into this double top, uh, there were a lot of traders that were eyeing the 2880 area as being an area where a pullback may, uh, may start. Uh, that was not the case because we held uh, l last week's prior low and we actually broke above the prior high. And once we broke above the power high, we powered higher, setting a high all the way into the 2942.75, where we were about five points away from making a new high into the mini SMP here. So you could see 2948 uh, was the high that was recorded last year in September, September, uh, September 17th. All right, so we have, we're basically five points away. We were five points away from printing a new all-time high into the MNA SMP. So MNA SMP continues to be strong, continues to have the relative strength. Uh, financials are strengthening as well. So uh, that's also a good drive for the MNA SMP to push higher. Now, the daily chart, very shallow pullback buy off the 10 exponential moving average with a pullback buy trigger over the 2935.75. Uh, so uh, 2936 becomes the trigger for uh, for this price action. And we have actually challenged these prior highs from earlier this week, setting that new high on Friday. So really nice push into, uh, into Friday. Uh, targets for the upcoming week. First target is going to be into the 2950 area, 2950 uh, is going to be the next projection area and uh, the next immediate target is going to be 2967 for the upcoming week. All right, so uh, immediate uh, price action activity for the overnight trading session. Uh, we challenged these prior highs, so we just made a new high and he pulled back by all the way into the 33 to 35 zone in the overnight trading session may be seen as uh, as a possible rotation that may take the prices into the targets that were mentioned. Uh, let's continue with NASDAQ. And uh, NASDAQ has been one of the strongest indices uh, last week. We're going to take it back to the weekly charts. You can see the strength here. These are the highs from last year, October last year, October plateau into the 7730s. The volatility spiked again here. And then we have this really nice move higher. What I would really like to see for all the indices, and I should have started with this, uh, is that once these highs are going to be taken out, we probably can have uh, another uh, another like higher, maybe for three to five days or even more, even for a couple of weeks. And then on the pullback phase, going back into these, uh, these October highs are going to become the new platform of support from where which price may rotate to sustain a much higher price target. So we're still running a little bit higher here. 
Uh, no uh, clue and no indice so far as a pullback. So we're still, until proven otherwise, we still, and I'm still going to remain bullish with pullback buys that are going to be, uh, that are going to be playable. Uh, so the weekly chart definitely projects higher. Uh, we had a pretty nice uh, uh, candle and a close uh, into new highs. So we have no reason to think uh, otherwise to think bearish. Moving into the daily chart, very shallow pullback that came in on Thursday. On Friday, a revisit of the 10 exponential moving average and a push a little bit higher. Now, um, we noticed that the M&E S&P just made a new high last week, right? It was just trying to play catch up. In the last minutes, we had that impulse buy into the M&E Dow. Well, we did have the same. Uh, we did have the same impulse into the last 10 minutes of the trading session on Friday, but we did not manage to record a new high compared to the prior day, meaning on Thursday. So, um, Nasdaq has not made a new high compared to Thursday, so it did not have a consolidated push uh, higher. Uh, for uh, for the last trading day of, of, of the week. Uh, however, in this upcoming week, if we manage to uh, trade above 78.50, 78.50 is going to be seen as another uh, breakout area for the price to, to uh, break out higher at least 20 points. Uh, and I'm talking about immediate price action here for the day trader. So 78.20 is going to become the new line in the sand. Any pullback to 78.20 may represent a pullback buy area that may push the price higher at least into the 58.50, uh, 78.50, I'm sorry, and 78.80 area. Further price targets for the week, that's going to be 7,900 beyond those targets that I have uh, just mentioned. So uh, 7,900 and 79.56 for the upcoming week. And don't forget that. This upcoming week, we have very, very um, um, man, we have a lot of earnings that are coming out of uh, from big, big companies. OK, so we're going to be watching that as well. All right. Let's uh, take a look at Russell. Russell. Um, well, let's take it back to the weekly chart. And it's been like a few weeks now uh, <laughs> where I have been uh, mentioning over and over again. Again, I will re reiterate, this is a inverse, this is an inverse head and shoulder, a breakout over 1600 and Russell has been trying to consolidate very strongly at the 1600 level. Any breakout over 1600 is going to bring uh, the price and the price is going to move to 50 point increments. So we have a pretty nice a uh, pretty nice target area into the 16, uh, 1650, 1700, and 1750. So this is uh, this is how I see uh, Russell uh, project into a very close future if we get this finally get this breakout over 1600. So this is something that uh, that I'm again looking forward uh, to this uh, to this week. So it's been uh, it's been like this since uh, pretty much since the beginning of uh, March. So uh, it's been about two weeks since we have been waiting for this uh, breakout to happen over 1600. So again, when this is going to happen, this is going to have a very explosive move with a very nice price trajectory and a uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, possible um, uh, trend moving higher. All right, so let's take it down to the daily chart and let's get closer to our uh, trading action. You can see here that basically what we have is we have a 50 point stop if you're looking at the swing trading perspective. A break over 1600 is a stop 1550. This is going to project the price higher. For those of you that have smaller accounts, and I'm going to be having a seminar uh, on, um, uh, on the new micro minis that are going to be issued by the CME on May 6th, uh, I, this is the type of swing trade that will enable traders, smaller account traders, to participate in these kinds of moves. Uh, so just remember that the commissions are going to be the same. And uh, from my perspective, I think that the new micro minis are going to uh, fall into um, a place a lot better 
when we're going to be looking for uh, when, you know, specific specifically for uh, for small account holders when they're going to be looking to swing. I don't see the possibility for a day trade that much, but for swing trading opportunities, that's going to make more sense because uh, you're going to have to make a lot more points in order to cover those commissions. So it's for from, from my perspective, that's not going to be a very good tool uh, for day trading, but it's going to be a fantastic tr a tool for a uh, much longer time frame trading, swing trading, core trading, etc. So it's going to pan out. So this is the type of play. If you're a small account holder and if you cannot uh, give a 50 point stop, this is uh, the exact uh, this this is the exact example that I, and the exact trade that you would be able to trade with those micro minis, minis. All right, so let's take it a, a deep uh, further into uh, into our hourly charts. Hourly charts, we have again a double top right here. Price has accelerated back into the 95 area. 95 area is a very crowded area. Things may get rejected at this point. Pullbacks, again, pullbacks into the 86, 85 level are going to be viable again. So watch the 85 and the 90s, either a consolidation at this point with a rotation higher back into the 1600 and uh, and higher uh, for it. So like I said, further targets, 1650, 1700, these are going to be the targets. And there are targets all the way into the uh, 1787, okay? All right, so that's it for the indices. Uh, I wanna zoom in right now to uh, some commodities and we're gonna review, we're gonna start off with gold. We're gonna take gold to the monthly chart. So monthly chart, we had some resistance. Gold reacted to the resistance at the 1350. So we managed to trade. So we had really nice trades moving to the upside. And again, we have the pullback. I love the doji that is setting up uh, on the monthly chart. Pullback right into the 20 simple moving average. Very nice reaction that came in on Friday. We had the bottoming effect into Thursday, when, um, into, I'm sorry, into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We had the really nice price propelling higher, making new highs of uh, making new highs for uh for the week so very very nice now uh what i like about this monthly chart is that this is a textbook pullback buy and uh don't forget that uh we have just a few days left so we have a couple of days left monday tuesday uh within this bar and then on wednesday we're gonna have brand new monthly charts and that means that if we're gonna get a trigger over 1316 uh, price is going to start to climb higher back into these highs of 1348. Uh, let's move on to the daily chart. We have added this week, so we have been in gold. We have added this week at the 1271 level. And uh, we're looking for definitely, this is a built on, uh, built on core swing slash core position because we're looking for higher targets we're looking for targets back into uh back into these highs again into the 13 15 and this is actually going to be the trigger for that monthly so if we're going to get the price uh we're we're going to get a, an acceleration in price that is going to take out this high we may see further price acceleration into the 30s into the 40s into the 50s and 60s and even higher so we do have uh higher projections into the 13 uh 67 and actually 1400 this is go going to be a longer term trade if you will all right so for those of you that are looking for actionable uh really actionable trading ideas i'm going to take it to the weekly chart so again going into tonight and into tomorrow if the price is going to progress over 1280 1291 uh things may rotate uh quickly and may progress into the 95 95 is going to become a bit of a problem area i'm going to take it back uh, to uh, to the daily chart right here. So we have why is the twelve ninety five a problem area? Well, because we have uh, we have actually three prior lows right here that are creating a shelf of res of, of rather than a, a rather a ceiling of resistance at this price point between twelve ninety and twelve ninety five. This is going to be the most turbulent zone. If the price is going to bam shoot up through the ninety five, any pullback buys is going to be in progress. That is going to take the price higher into the 1300 
and uh, back into this high of 1315 that is actually going to trigger and it's going to push the price even higher uh, based on that uh, weekly buy and also monthly buy, right? So uh, two more days within this month. And then if we go for that pullback buy onto the monthly and that trigger over 15, it's going to launch the price back higher. There have been some news throughout this week uh in, within this weekend that may have and may push a uh, gold prices higher into this week so we're gonna see how that's gonna play out uh from the hourly perspective i'm not a big fan of uh day trading gold however uh if you're looking for a pullback area if you want to leg in as a mini swing or a trend trade let's say on this trend reversal because we've had the bottom high and, and rising rising bottoms and rising highs right here. So really nice conducive of a change uh, in the structure of the chart. But if if you should look for another swing opportunity, maybe pullbacks into uh, uh, into the uh, 1285 area, 1284 um, may provide you some secondary entries for a shorter term swing. Um, all right, so let's move on to crude. Uh, crude, I'm going to take it to the weekly chart. Uh, crude had an amazing ascent uh, into this, these prior resistance areas from last year, from April, and uh, actually from a whole summer. We have traded and established this support level throughout the whole entire summer. We blasted higher in September, and then everybody knows what happened with the meltdown in price price came back in in december december 24th double bottom right here into the 42 dollars 40 42 dollars and in fact what happened is that we had uh we had this topping tail candle that suggested uh that the price action may start retracing we didn't have an uh we didn't have a big push in volume so this came with moderate volume constant volume so it looked like a pullback. Now, this was the decisive factor because everybody was looking for the $65 to hold and $65, uh, $65 to hold. So at this point, we had one, two, three, one, two, three candles down, back into support, back into the uh, 50 simple moving average, and there was no rotation at this point. Uh, and this was actually the bigger, uh, bigger breakdown that came into play, and that's one of the reasons why the price of the price accelerated. Now, there was a caution moment right here at the 200 SMA back in November, and a lot of traders uh, were looking to go long here, and this was actually a very good signal for a long because we were trading into the support from. Uh, 2017 and early 2018 so this was a very good rotation area it triggered so we held the low it triggered higher and we stayed here for a couple of days one two days you could see it right here and until price action eliminated the low at 49 level so this was the first uh first attempt uh for a rotation higher and you could see that the price was getting extended really extended from the 20 sma and from the 10 uh, from the uh 20 uh 20 sma and the 10 ema right here so this would this would have been a really nice textbook buy area right here off the shelf of support but no uh things accelerated with more volatility actually crude was following the market the market was you know uh, not really reacting according to the end of the year in uh, uh you know um it was uh a uh, very uh, volatile going into December. We practically didn't have a window dressing. Uh, we, we we didn't have window dressing effect. Everything was basically the window dressing happened after uh, December twenty fourth. That was the buy the bottom in the market. But again, this was a buying opportunity right here that failed. Price accelerated lower, and then we had a double bottom right here. This was again another signal to buy. So you know, no. Um, basically you get in here you have your stop you this is your first try uh oftentimes when you're trying to buy bottoms uh, you have to give it at least two to three tries uh so um we got another we have the next leg down we have uh we have another doji this is the second doji 
uh, with a trigger over 47. The risk for this trade was 42. And again, for those of you that are trading small accounts and that are seeing these values, remember, you could trade them via micros or via minis, okay? So you could actually take a step back from the full contract. If this is too much for you, have a smaller account size. So there's you could actually find that you, know, you you can position size better for your risk level. So anyways, we got the rotation here. We were uh, definitely into oversold area and then we have been in, uh, into oversold for about, well, I would say for close to a month here. And that's why here was actually the first attempt for uh, for the price to accelerate a little bit higher. Uh, and it consolidated very nicely here as it approached the 200 simple moving average at the $50 mark, $51 mark consolidation right here, igniting higher, again, plateaued here. And all these, uh, all these ranges that were developed uh, at this price point were because of these prior highs. So this, the price needed to digest, just like we spoke about the uh, Dow uh, digesting that triple top that we're in right now. The more the price is consolidating at that high, that doesn't mean that we're bearish. That means that the price is chewing up that resistance and is ready to propel and ignite higher. Uh, so we have the same price action activity at this level bef uh, between $51 and $55. And again, these ranges were pretty wide. These are not for small accounts to trade. Again, if you have a small account, we can look at some minis or micros etc uh we had a pullback and this is the first uh attempt for uh, uh first attempt to establish a trend and actually the first time uh when crude was trading not only above the 20 exponential but above the 200 and also uh we had the 10 exponential moving average that was was that is actually combing the price uh, and pushing it higher here so i really like this trajectory we had a target level of 60 dollars and a secondary resistance at 63 dollars and you can see that this is where the turbulence has started into the 63 dollars topping tail into last week uh, this is last week's trading activity, but are we bearish? Well, here's the thing. If we're going to break below $62, but we're going to have to see how um, uh, the news that came in through this weekend, uh, over this weekend, is going to influence the price. So if we break below $62, there, there is a high probability that the price is going to try to attempt to tap onto the $60 area before it rotates. And if we're going to get a range into this area, or if we're gonna try to, uh, if we're gonna try to uh, set up a pullback buy, this is gonna be the area where I will be watching. Uh, other than that, if we break the sixty-dollar mark, we're gonna probably come back down to retest the fifty-dollar area before we start moving higher. All right, from the daily perspective, daily perspective, like I said, we're not looking yet extremely bearish on it. I mean, we just violated the 10 and the 20, but we came in into the double uh, double bottom here uh, from these uh, April lows, and we also have the 200 simple moving average at $62. So we're gonna have to watch the price action behavior here. If the price action is gonna violate below $61.85, then it makes sense to watch for a correction back into the $60.50, and then we're gonna wait for a rotation at this point that may take the price higher. I'm not gonna go to a steeper uh, to, a, to a steeper time frame here because I don't like really to watch uh, crude on a micro micro level all right let's uh continue with bonds uh this is going to be a little bit longer video here so bonds have been consolidating here uh mid april one two three four days before they ignited higher we have the really nice hook created right at the 146.30 Price traded with a trigger um, over 147.15, pushed higher. We still have room for projection back into the 148.15 uh, for this week. Uh, the weekly chart last week, I mentioned this in the video, we, uh, we left with a doji. Uh, and I did mention over 147 with a stop below 145.30 may project the price higher. And I did, uh, I did give a number of 147.20. We achieve that number and we are looking for another correction uh, for another continuation higher into the 148.26 and back into these highs right here into the 149. 
All right, and this is the 30-year bond. Let's continue with heating oil, and we're going to go to heating oil and also uh, we, uh, into our bond. We have received literally tons of questions about these two uh, these two commodities. Heating oil is back in uh, back trading into the two dollar price range level and it tapped onto the uh, tapped onto the uh, uh, ten exponential moving average. Also, minor support for uh, for this level at two point zero two. The thing is that if we're gonna break below one point ninety five, we're gonna come in a little bit more probably to one eighty seven and uh, 181 but as long as the price is going to remain here i'm just going to be a spectator so i'm not going to do anything at this uh at this point the daily chart you can see that it came back down into minor support level so this is going to be a decision zone. so we have to wait for price action to to determine what it wants to do so remember we just have to uh obey the charts and we have to basically uh trade what the charts are telling us to trade and at this point the chart is not telling us anything is the chart is telling us to have patience because we're back into this two dollar and we need the price to settle either uh either rotate continue higher or it needs to come with a little bit more confirmation under two dollars uh for for an acceleration lower uh, let's check on to our Bob. Our Bob. I've seen gasoline prices, um, well, soar into last week. But what is going on with our Bob? Let's check it out. So we daily chart. I'm gonna move to the weekly chart right here. Bob, a topping tail, right? So if we press and if the price is gonna trade below 2.06 we may have another acceleration lower and these are the following targets 1.98 1.95 and we're going to get back into the 1.9 area i think this is going to be the decision point between 1.8 and 1.9 if it wants to rotate back up but right now we're getting the price got rejected from this 215 level from this prior high back in last october it, anyways it had a really nice recoup very nice a uh, uh, very nice kind of like a little bit of rounded bottom right here so we had uh the first trigger just like crude so we had the first trigger for higher we had the failure and then later in december last week of december we got the rotation hook and press higher right here in our bob so right now i'm not going to take any action in our bob uh natural gas and copper these are the uh next two uh commodities on my list weekly chart i'm gonna leave natural gas alone for now uh so we had an acceleration lower we actually had it long back here we did not participate in the short uh of this uh of this commodity we actually made a new low here into the 2.43 uh, now let me remind you that this level has not been tested since uh 2016 so this was a major thing right now uh i don't know if this area is gonna hold here or if it really wants to accelerate lower i have to watch it i have to watch the 260 area if the price is gonna get rejected at 260 we may still have another like another like lower and this time around it's not gonna be as fun because it could really 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 take a steeper dive uh even into the two dollar area so uh, we're going to see how that goes. All right. Last but not uh, last, but uh, not least. Okay. And here is uh, copper, HG. Uh, copper futures. And again, with copper, with copper you, and with natural gas, you could also trade the minis for those of you that have smaller accounts. Copper is still stabilizing right here. Double bottom from last year, uh, basing at the $3 mark. You could see how this area is such a big big resistance right from these multi lows right here and this is 2017 and 2018 lows that were really pushing up up and putting a lot of pressure at this three dollar mark so it's still consolidating so as long as 283 is going to hold and if we're going to get a break over uh three dollars price may increase higher it's not one of my favorite patterns even though i love to trade um I really love to trade um, um, copper and commodities in general. Okay, ZW. This is wheat. All right, so wheat has been, you know, we have been participating in this rally here. Uh, we took some profits, not really big profits, uh, but we did uh, We did have some green. 
Um, and then we had this failure. So we had the weekly rotation lower, took the price back into the support at a uh, 427 level. And still the price to me is not ready for any commitment. So we still, we're still trading below the 200 SMA. We still have a lot of selling pressure that is coming here. I'm not going to be wa wanting to take this, uh, uh, this uh, weekly buy here that is setting up. So even though we have support at 27, I don't want to be a buyer at the 446 level. Although it may run into the 460, but I'm not really into this uh, kind of pattern. To me, it's very, very messy right now. Um, looking at the monthly chart, you know, last month, this is one of the reasons why, you know, I've kind of liked and I, I looked at it because we had this really nice shaped doji here. And if the price would have started to finally move beyond uh, 478, we would have seen targets into 500, 550, and 600 back again. But as long as it's trading, you know, within last week's range, there are no changes. And in this, these uh, two upcoming days, Monday, Tuesday, if the price is going to break below 426, I'm afraid that this is going to open the door for lower prices in wheat, uh, even below 400. Um, one more, and this is soybeans. Okay, soybeans monthly chart, we get the same rotation to the downside. Uh, and uh, in fact, we have signaled a continuation lower right here, but we're hitting support at the 8, 855 zone. So not a big fan of it. Weekly charts, weekly charts, again, they're downtrending. The price is, uh, the price is trading below all the simple moving averages that I, uh, that I uh, use on my charts uh, that are signaling that we can have more selling pressure underway. We had a little last year uh, in September uh, at the 811 area. I don't think it's ready for any kind of continuation, uh, for any kind of continuation higher at this point. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember that we have an upcoming class in May. If you would like to find out more information about the class, we uh, the class is Day Trading uh, Futures. It's about power income day trading futures. You can email us at info at tradeoutloud.com and we will send you a full curriculum. Uh, you could check out our reviews. The class starts uh, May 13th and it is a five-day class. Uh, it is a power, power class. Uh, we're going to be teaching you everything from A to Z. Uh, we're going to be teaching uh, um, strategies, trailing. Uh, we're going to be teaching you risk management, uh, technical analysis. We've got a full big, big chapter of technical analysis and how to use technical analysis, price action, etc. So like I said, if you want more information about the class, you can email us at info at .com. More than happy to provide you guys with uh, all the information. We also have a live trading room where um, uh, we trade every single day, Monday through Friday from uh, 9 o'clock Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you're interested to learn more about the trading room, you can visit our website. Uh, it is tradeoutloud.com forward slash live trading room. Thank you so much and have a wonderful, profitable trading week ahead. See you next week.